Good evening and welcome to St. Paul, Minnesota. I am Sam Goley, a contributing St. Thomas writer for the Reaching the Summit podcast network. And tonight is the first annual St. Thomas Basketball Award Show. We have assembled a panel of 20 experts and my mom to vote on these eight basketball awards. We're very happy to give them out. And tonight I will be joined in giving out these awards by Pioneer Football League first teamer, Matthew Wyman. Matt, thank you for joining me tonight. Goy, thank, thank you for reaching out to me with this idea. Very happy to be a co-host on this. Uh, as Goy mentioned, I'm a student athlete at the University of St. Thomas, uh, currently playing football and studying a marketing management there. And I love watching Tommy basketball. Can't wait to give out these awards. We have eight awards. We're very excited to get them out. We have player interviews, instant reactions. I, I, think, I think we put together a good show tonight, wouldn't you say, man? I'd say it's pretty good, yeah. And we'll, without further ado, we'll get it going. We're going to start off with the most electrifying play in basketball, the slam dunk. Now, USD may not have had many of these this year, as probably all of you watching this know, but the few that they did have really lit up the building. <clears throat> the nominees for best dunk are Parker Bjorkland versus Denver. Brooks Allen versus University of Nebraska Omaha. Parker Bjorklin versus the University of Nebraska Omaha. Parker Bjorklin versus North Dakota State University. Wow, man. I mean, what a set of dunks we had to choose from. Absolutely. You know, when two whole players on the team get dunks on the, during the year, it's fantastic. This was also the tightest voting we had of any of our polls we had. So the winner, without further ado, the winner of the best dunk is Parker Bjorklund versus University of Nebraska Omaha. Congratulations, Parker. Nine to shoot. Bjorklund takes it left of the lane with seven, rips it towards the rim, gets there, and reverse dunks for two. Matt, I'm not going to lie. This one might test the credibility of our voters on this one. This also might be the most exciting category we have all night. You know, Honestly, one of my favorite awards on the slate, but definitely not a normal award. <clears throat> this is the award for tallest player. The nominees are Brooks Allen, listed at six foot seven. Bennett Bennett Kwachinski, six foot nine inches. Courtney Brown Jr., listed at six foot seven. And finally, Parker Bjorklin, listed at six foot six inches. And the winner of 2021-2022's tallest player on the St. Thomas men's basketball team is Brooks Allen. Yeah, um, I would like to just thank a couple people, my parents, for being tall, passing those genetics on to me. God, um, my corporate sponsor, Kemp Skim Milk. Um, um, it's honestly a blessing to beat out other tall guys on the team such as Bennett he's I will admit he is taller than me Parker I've I've always known it so it hasn't came as a surprise to me but it might surprise him that I'm I'm definitely taller taller than him sometimes he wants to think he's taller than me I'm glad that myself and the committee have been able to see that I'm definitely an inch or maybe two taller than him thank you gotcha Perfect. congratulations to Brooks we cut up with Brooks earlier to talk about this historic win Matt and I are very grateful to be joined by the 2021-22 tallest player on the St. Thomas men's basketball team, Brooks Allen. Uh, Brooks, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, it's my pleasure to be here. So, Brooks, in addition to uh, tallest player, uh, you are also, I would say, the closest that a St. Thomas player was to winning Summit League honors as the sixth man of the year. Um, and as far as I know, you're the only one with an organized fan club as well. And I think really where you endeared yourself to the St. Thomas fans was when you stepped up for Parker when he was out in December. So maybe you could kind of give us some insight as uh, you sort of prepared to sort of take that step and jump up and join that starting rotation, you know, especially because you were facing a guy like Trebil Bello, who's going to be playing later this week versus Montana State. So if you could give us some insight, we'd appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, I would first start to say that you don't really prepare. Well, you always prepare to be ready to play, obviously, but – never expect something like that to happen like Parker getting mono and being out for a whole month so when I was told I had to step up and enter into a starting role it was something that it's an opportunity that I was 
happy to have, obviously. I mean, obviously, I don't want Parker being sick. He's a valuable player to our team. But just always being ready, that's kind of been my mindset through my whole career at St. Thomas. For those that maybe don't know, I haven't always gotten playing time on the court. First two years here in D3, I hardly played at all. I think last year, JT brought up the stat the other day. I had nine points all year last year, and this year I averaged around seven and a half. So, yeah, just proud of my progress, proud of the, of having such a great opportunity here at St. Thomas and look forward to continuing it. Sweet. Absolutely. And building off of that, uh, you, so you kind of got thrown into a starting role, um, but you noticed that a pretty cool handshake with Zach Tice. Did you have that planned or did you make that up right before the game when you learned you were starting? Yeah, so um, I knew for a couple of days I was probably going to start. Parker told us in pre- practice a few days before that game. And Zach's my roommate, so, you know, we were kind of just brainstorming in the apartment, you know, what are we going to do? Came came up with that one. Didn't want it to be anything too crazy, but still wanted to have some fun with it. Definitely. Absolutely. Some would say that you actually had a more decorated tennis career in high school, uh, being all-conference twice. Uh, did you take anything from your tennis game and apply it to basketball? Is there anything that you can take from that? Um, yeah, I mean – my tennis career wasn't too te- decorated. There's not a – the amount of kids that play basketball throughout high school is a lot higher than the amount of kids that play tennis, so it's a little easier to step foot on that court compared to this one. Don't but, sell yourself short, Brooks. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I would say – and our coaching staff would probably say I have to w- keep working on it, but, you know, just like a mental toughness thing. When you're out there on the tennis court, you're the only one out there. There's, you don't have any teammates to blame. So that might be where – my coaches say I'm a little too hard on myself at times, and that might be where I get it from. Um, but no, just being a competitor, I feel like tennis, other sports I've played growing up, all of it contributes to that to a certain extent. For sure. Gotcha. Uh, very interesting as well. Um, well, Brooks, I know me and Matt both have definitely enjoyed watching your development, and you definitely, for a you know former D3 JV guy, definitely stepped up to the Division One plate well. Uh, we just wanted to thank you again for your time and for joining us here tonight. There's two phases to the game, offense and defense, and some can do one phase better than the other. Absolutely. When it comes to St. Thomas, uh, defense is definitely not the stronger of the two. Actually, not even mentioned on the team's Twitter account since 2020. Interesting. <laughs> it's very interesting. That is interesting. <laughs> but we do have some great individual defenders on the team. And that is the award we are giving out right now as Defensive Player of the Year. And the nominees are Parker Bjorkland, Brooks Allen, Bert Hedstrom, Ryan Lindbergh. The winner for Defensive Player of the Year and our first two time award winner in the history of this show, the great Parker Bjorkland. Congratulations to Parker. Uh, we got a chance. We were lucky that he joined us for a little bit. We got to know a little bit more about him. And here's that interview following up next. We are pleased to be joined by the 2021-2022 UST Basketball Defensive Player of the Year, Parker Bjorkland. Thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. Now, the name Bjorkland, very popular in the Summit League. Uh, your cousin Marshall was a NDSU legend, won an NCAA tournament game. Uh, has he been helpful? Have you heard anything? Uh, from him about you know, your experience playing in the Summit League this season? Uh, yeah, Marshall, when I was younger, uh, middle school, I'd always go for the NDSU to watch him play in Summit League games. Little did I know back then I'd be playing in the same league as him, you know, seven years later. But, no, I learned I learned a lot from Marshall growing up, just watching his game. He, we kind of have similar games. I would say he's more of a, a true big man. Um, you know, just shots right around the goal. You know, he's got a nice hook. So our games are pretty similar, um, but yeah, he's taught me a little bit of things and, you know, he came out to a lot of our games this year and supported me and the team and it was, it's been a ton of fun. Sweet. Absolutely. And you started off well this year, uh, but you ended up having to sit out for about a month. I think it was, uh, how hard was it to just get back into game flow when you got back and how to get reconditioned coming off that long of a absence? Right. I would say the most difficult thing about that wasn't necessarily coming back and getting getting back in shape. I would say it would just be being out for a month. 
and literally not being able to do any physical activity. Like I couldn't even lift on my own. I couldn't run. I couldn't go to the gym. And that was definitely the hardest part was just like not being active. It took a little toll on my mental health because obviously I'm not working out. I can't be playing the game I love. So it was really tough in that aspect. But once, once I got back in the gym, it wasn't, it wasn't that, it wasn't as hard as I thought to get back in shape. Um, <clears throat> Obviously, I do a lot, a lot of conditioning when I got back, but it, it wasn't, it wasn't too bad in terms of getting back in shape. It was mostly just sitting out a month and not being able to play basketball. Gotcha. And I think everyone would agree you came back and performed at that same high level. Uh, I had kind of a personal question. A lot of words have been written about this social media company that you have, but you're not, you don't have a personal Twitter. Maybe you can kind of give us some insight on that. Sure. Yeah. So when I growing up in high school, I had a bunch of parody accounts on Twitter. Um, like office scenes, how like any like TV scene, movie theme character account, I, I would run on my on my own. So I had about at one point I had like 25 accounts, four million followers across the model. I was promoting businesses um, for people that wanted to get it more get more exposure. Uh, so Twitter kind of saw that as like competition because businesses would come to me, so I could promote right. their stuff in, instead of going to like actual Twitter ads. So Twitter saw me as like competition to them. So they ended up like device banning me. So they banned all the accounts on my phone. They like IP banned me. So if I were to make like a new account right now, it would instantly get banned. Oh, interesting. Good. Yeah. So yeah. it's, yeah. So I had obviously my personal account on my phone with all the other parody accounts. So it happened to just get suspended just like all others. And I can't get, I, I've tried to like appeal it and get it back, but I haven't been able to do it. So. Gotcha. Interesting. All right. And last question is, uh, this is your first year of eligibility if you've actually used. So you have three years remaining. Um, what do you plan to do? Do you plan to return to UST? Uh, or what are you thinking right now? Uh, yeah, I think I have actually two years of eligibility, but um, I definitely want to continue to play basketball. Um, that's become a huge passion of mine within like the last year. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do this upcoming year. Um, I definitely want to come back to St. Thomas. Um, I still haven't had like that meeting with like the coaches to see like what the whole situation is looking like. Looking like. So I'll, I'll, I'll know more about that within the next week. I think I'm actually going to meet with them tomorrow or the day after. But um, I'm definitely not putting the ball down or hanging up the jersey. I'm going to keep playing. I just don't know exactly – you know, where that's going to be next year. Gotcha. Well, Parker, I know you're a busy man. I really do appreciate you taking the time to talk with us tonight. Um, we certainly are going to wish you luck with whatever you plan on doing in your future. And again, thank you very much for joining us. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, Parker. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. St. Thomas, this sports season has been blessed with some new coaches. This next award honors the best coach of the year. Whoa. Best winter coach oh yes it th this award is for the best winter coach of the year the nominees are ruth sin john tower rico blasi joel johnson and the winner of the 2021-22 winter coach of the year is dr john tower the men's basketball coach here at the university of st thomas we made him a limited edition signed certificate and trophy as well. Well-deserved. Matt, thoughts on this historic win? Yeah, definitely. Congratulations to Coach Tower. Um, you know, they win 10 games this year. Not a lot of people outside of St. Thomas would have ever expected that uh, in their first year in Division One. So definitely a great accomplishment. You also had some stiff competition. Um, I think that definitely this poll was sort of maybe biased towards Dr. John Tower. Um, especially with the basketball focus of this award show. But, you know, it, it was a fair fight. It was definitely equal opportunity for all the coaches involved. Great nominees. We're looking forward to seeing how all four teams do in the future. Matt, the great part about the Summit League is the quality of basketball is unparalleled. But that also means that, unfortunately, some other players are going to get hot against our beloved St. Thomas Tommies. Absolutely. Summit League, you know, competition through the roof. The amount of elite performances that happened in just Shonaker Arena, not to mention the away games, uh, that I mean, they weren't great to watch because they were opposing, but they were very impressive. We're in a pro Summit League here award show, so we decided to honor the Summit League player 
that had the best opposing game against St. Thomas. The nominees are Max Aisness from Oral Roberts. Baylor Shearman, South Dakota State. Paul Bruns, University of North Dakota. Trenton Massner, Western Illinois University. And the player who had the best game against St. Thomas is Max Aismas, Oral Roberts. We did make a trophy for him. We did have a science certificate, even though it does have a St. Thomas logo on it. We hope it makes it to Tulsa. Max, if you're watching, we hope this made it to you. Thank you. Th- thank you. And in congratulations. Advance. Yes. You, you know, yes. I, w- I was at the game personally. Incredible. It was an incredible performance by you. Absolutely. Again, we pay our respects to the Summit League. We're very happy to be following a team that's also in the Summit League. We also appreciate following the other teams as well. And good luck to South Dakota State in the NCAA tournament. Absolutely. I mean, probably representative. No idea what's coming their way. Exactly. The Big East, are they even known for basketball? No, no. They're not as proud, I was going to say. Come on. Anyway, congratulations again, Max. Matt, we all know basketball is a team sport, but some nights someone just gets hot. Yeah, you know, if someone can win a single game by themselves in basketball, not all sports are like that, but definitely a lot of great performances this year from UST. This next category is for best single game performance by a St. Thomas player. The nominees are Anders Nelson versus St. Francis. Parker Bjorkman versus University of Missouri at Kansas City. Brooks Allen versus Denver University. Riley Miller versus Southern Illinois University at Edwardsville. And the winner of best single game performance by a St. Thomas basketball player is Anders Nelson versus St. Francis. We were lucky to be able to catch up with Anders Nelson earlier this week and talk to him about winning this award. Matt and I are pleased to be joined by the winner of the best single game performance player of the year, 2021-22, Anders Nelson. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. No problem, guys. Thanks for having me on. This is fun. For sure. All right, Anders, so you won this award for your performance against St. Francis where you dropped 30 points and St. Thomas's uh, first ever Division I win. Uh, how was, what was going through your mind during that game, and what does that win mean to you and to the team? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I think that's obviously, uh, you know, one of the wins throughout the year that was kind of a landmark, and obviously it was, it was a really big deal, that being our first Division I win. Um, you know, I – and – as it was happening, it was all just almost kind of a blur, right? I mean, it was a great game. It was early on in the season, and, you know, we're kind of finding our footing and, and where we're at as, as a team in the Division One level, and it was just really exciting. Um, you know, the team had great energy that day, and our first game on the road uh, – well, sorry, our second game out on the road, but we're out in New York, and, you know, it was just a really fresh, cool experience for the young guys, but also – you know, some of the older guys that had been out there and, and played out there on our team freshman year, too. We actually had a couple games in Division Three, So, um, obviously, it was a really exciting game. And, you know, to get that win and, and, and the way in which we did it, it was just a cool experience, no doubt. Awesome. And then, you know, especially now, it's very rare that you get to play with the same starting five you did last season. Can you maybe talk us through, you know, sort of the importance with playing with a group of guys you'd already played so many games with? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I think that was probably one of the main factors to our to our team success. Um, you know, it was just amazing to be a part of a group where everybody's so close and, and the newcomers are able to come in and feel comfortable right away and, and kind of understand the vibe of our team, right? And, you know, this year we had seven seniors, all really good dudes. Um, you know, we're We've been through a lot on the court and off with COVID and everything like that and seasons getting canceled and whatnot. So um, that's something we took a lot of pride in. And, um, you know, I think all of us kind of had a chip on our shoulder. Like teams are looking at us like we're a bunch of Division Three dudes and 
we're we're here to prove you wrong and not only that are we great teammates to each other but we're all best friends too so it was really something special and um you know something i definitely didn't take for granted the whole year awesome and then finally that senior night experience what a night like you mentioned you know seven seniors very important senior group maybe uh give us sort of your take on uh you know what that night meant especially honoring that group of guys yeah for sure well first of all um, you know, it's always a weird thing when you know your last game, right? So right. not many teams are in a position where, you know, you're going into a game and, you, you know, obviously the playoffs are a different thing. You know it could be your last game, but you're not going into it thinking, hey, that we're done after this, you know, unless you're playing in the national championship, which is a totally different right. thing. Right? So for us knowing that and, um, you know, just – kind of recapping together how much time we'd all spent together. It was definitely a special night. Um, everybody was just on business. And I think in the back of everybody's head, nobody really said it out loud, but we were all just thinking like, you know, we got to do this for us. This is for nobody else but us. This is our last game together. We're on our home floor. Um, let's just go out with a bang. And um, it obviously it couldn't have gone much better. We shot the ball. Everybody contributed. Um and then the end of that game, too, I mean, with the fans and everything, it was just – it was rocking in Shenaker that night. And um, it was just kind of a magical ending, to be honest, to uh, kind of an end of an era of that, those Division three guys and, and the seven seniors, you know, who whoever may be coming back or, or, or whatnot. But we, we all kind of felt that it was an end of an era and we were just playing out there for each other. That's right. I definitely do think it was a perfect cap to a good era of guys making that first – jump to division one from division three i had to think about it there for a second well anyway otters i know you're a busy guy thank you very much for hopping on with us tonight it's definitely been a treat to watch your career and uh just once again thank you for hopping on with us for sure man i appreciate you guys and i want to say thanks to you too for being great fans throughout the year and and just keeping keeping up with us and supporting us all the way so appreciate absolutely. you guys absolutely yeah awesome. we wish you the best Anders. Thank you, man. Thank you. It's always good to have new faces on a team. Certainly will be helpful as St. Thomas moves forward in Division One. This next award honors the newcomer of the year. What do you think about this group of nominees, Matt? Well, I mean, we didn't see a whole lot from them considering this team was just basically all made up of seniors and juniors. Uh, but definitely some contributors, especially later in the season when they started to fit into their roles a little more. Absolutely. And it was really fun to see them sort of incorporate and you know get a little bit more roles every once in a while. The nominees for St. Thomas Newcomer of the Year are Bennett Kuczynski, Dom Martinelli, Ben Now, and the winner of the 2021-22 St. Thomas Men's Basketball Newcomer of the Year is Dom Martinelli. We we're able to catch up with Dom and talk to him about not only this award, but him starting off at a new team at a new program. Matt and I are grateful tonight to be joined by the 2021-2022 St. Thomas Newcomer of the Year, Dom Martinelli. Dom, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, so you're obviously the Newcomer of the Year. Um, you came from another school, Northwestern. Some would say a certain academic jump as well to St. Thomas. Um, I guess what factors sort of went into you choosing UST over, you know, maybe another school out there? Um, for me, I'd say um, really close relationship with Kevin Cunningham. Um, we've grown up together. We lived on the same street growing up. So I've known him since I was five or six years old. So and also just the opportunity to help rebuild a program that obviously was at a peak with in Division three, but just being able to start and being able to build it um, from the ground up a little bit uh, at the D1 level is something I thought that was really cool and just you know, in the future, being able to see how much St. Thomas grows as we become more and more big in our Minnesota and around the country, actually. So I'm just, that was the reason why I came here. I love the coaches, the program. I visited in high school, too, actually, and I loved it. So, yeah, that's that was one of the main reasons why I came. Absolutely, yeah. So you mentioned uh, you knowing Kevin and kind of leads into this. Uh, you kind of joined a team of where most of the guys playing and played together for four or five years. Um, what was it like, you know, kind of being the new guy on the block, uh, with a bunch of guys who've been playing together for such a long time? Yeah. I mean, 
I was very lucky that, I mean, our team was super um, engaged with letting me in and getting me into the offense and really just letting me play how I play. It was obviously a little tough at the start being out for the summer and for half of the season. But when I came back, you know, everybody just understood my role and I understood mine as well and just played to my strengths kind of. And I think that's what really helped us as a team, you know, just being able to let me play how I play. I mean, and just not really focused on really just minutes for anybody. Cause I know, especially when I came back, everything, people's rotations changed right. uh, obviously, but really just, I mean, it was a really good group of seniors and they really just wanted to help win. And that was the main thing. So that's what I was super happy about when I came and just being able to get in the rotation was super awesome. Gotcha. And then uh, Don, we were trying to pull little stats here on you. Um, you know, Matt and I, we both have other siblings. We know how important rivalries are. Uh, are you glad that your younger brother, Nick, was not able to take your scoring title from Glenbrook South? Or were you at all concerned about that as the season went on? Yeah, I was a little concerned. I mean, he had an amazing season. I mean, his team was awesome. He always can say now that he had the best team. Maybe I had the record still, and I <laughs> hopefully I'll hold that for a while. But, no, I was it, I was great. I'm actually home right now, so I went to got to go watch his playoff series. that They made it all the way to the Super Sectionals, which was awesome being there. But – it was, it's just really fun to watch him. I mean, we, I hope he, I wish he went to St. Thomas, you know, he chose Elon, but, and he'll be great there. He'll be a four-year starter, but yeah, I was just super proud of him. He just had a great season, a great career. It was awesome to watch. Awesome. Well, Dom, thank you very much. Uh, if you have any final thoughts, otherwise I think we'll let you go and enjoy your evening there at home. Awesome. Appreciate you guys. Absolutely. Gotcha. Thanks, Dom. And the flagship award tonight, the team most valuable player. Now, again, we, we've mentioned it before. Basketball is a team sport, but we thought it was important to recognize the player that this group of voters thought was the most valuable to this team. You know, the moment we've all been waiting for, everyone wants to win this award, but only few ever do. Oh, and only one in this circumstance. Only one oh, in this. Well, one. I just mean of all time. Right. But in this circumstance, uh, only one. We do not have co-MVPs. And we could not have asked for a better group of three players to be nominated for this award. The nominees are Riley Miller, Parker Bjorklund, and Anders Nelson. And the winner of the University of St. Thomas 2021-2022 Men's Basketball Most Valuable Player is Riley Miller. Congratulations to Riley. We were fortunate that earlier this week we were able to catch up with him and talk to him about winning this award. We're joined now by Riley Miller, the 2021-2022 voted team most valuable player. Riley, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, Riley, you're the team MVP for a reason. You put up some very impressive numbers, 15-3-2. Why do you think your game was able to translate so well to this Division One level? I mean, I think for me, I'm just I'm kind of a shooter, so... You can still shoot no matter what. It was a little harder to get shots off. And obviously you get some attention when you start hitting shots, but it's just finding ways to get your shots off. It's all the same. Definitely a really good season you guys put together this year. Um, obviously great shooting numbers from you. Uh, what do you think your favorite moment was this year? A uh, game or just a moment within the game that you enjoyed most? Yeah. Um, I mean, I kind of have two is, Senior night was a blast because kind of everyone had their moment when like whether it was Parker's dunk or Sarah's hitting a couple threes at the end or even like Burt getting the line at the end. But I think early on our win versus St. Francis was awesome. It was kind of out in Brooklyn and then we even had some Tommy fans out, out in New York to support us. But it was, that was an awesome atmosphere. Riley, I, I think me and Matt would both agree a very impressive part of your game is your ability to pick up a four-point play. Uh, maybe without giving away all of your secrets, maybe you can kind of give us some insight on the perfect way to get to the line for that extra point after a three. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I jump forward on my jump shot, so I kind of I'm kind of lucky, I guess, in that aspect. But also, it's kind of a curse sometimes because I probably I did lead the team in four point plays, but I also led the team in flop warning. So <laughs> it's kind of you get both of those. But yeah, I mean, I guess I just. I shoot it, and if I get contact, it happens a lot for me because I'm jumping forward on my shot. Definitely. And uh, over the last couple of years, we've kind of seen it all from you in the facial hair game, uh, from the mustache to the full beard. Uh, do you have any reason behind the method or any facial hair that you shot the best with? 
yeah i guess must or i guess the beard came first and that was kind of a covid project i was just like you know what i'm gonna let it go and then i wasn't gonna keep it and then i think the first game of the year last year i was eight for nine from three so i was like you know i I gotta i gotta roll with this and so that kind of transpired from there and then the mustache i kind of just did it as a joke and then kind of just been rolling with ever since it's kind of my brand now we just wanted to thank you again for joining us and answering our questions Uh, if you have any final thoughts otherwise we'll let you go and enjoy your night here yeah i mean thanks for having me it was a blast of the season so i appreciate it for sure thank you very much riley wow man what an absolute evening celebrating the best of tommy basketball absolutely i think the awards are given out to the right people i know some people disagree but i think the voters did a great job pegging the right people for the awards absolutely i I think for a first time out i don't think we did that bad either And again, for the final time, thank you to everyone involved with this. Me and Matt had a blast putting it together. I hope the people were involved, had as much fun as we did putting this together. And for one final time, we'd like to shout out our sponsor, Willow Creek Media. Yes, Willow Creek Media. Contact them with anything sports media or even possibly media related. Uh, Our good friend, Jake Kranz, runs the show over there. Phenomenal human being. He'll definitely help you out. And from the both of us, one last time. Good night, and we'll see you next season.